Hello. The following reflection is based on a passage from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. Just want to let you know this is not an easy passage, especially for the Sunday that happens also to be Father's Day Sunday. So let us take time to reflect together. In June 1961, Yale's university psychologist Stanley Milgram conducted a very interesting experiment that became famous. In short, the participant who answered an ad in a local newspaper were told they were, would be involved in an experiment on memory under the supervision of a man dressed in a white technician coat, like a scientist we see in the movie, one participant was given a list of words that he or she was to teach another person. And there was the second person who has to learn those words. Then, when it was time to review the list, the teacher was asking the learner those words and when the learner makes made a mistake the teacher was asked to administer an electric shock for an incorrect answer and to increase the shocks by 15 volts for each subsequent mistake that was the experiments the participant thought they were conducting. But in reality, there were no shocks, not even electricity, and the learner was in fact an actor. The real experiment was to measure the willingness of a, an average individual, who was the teacher, to obey a figure of authority instructing people to perform acts, an act that conflict with one personal conscience. And the results gathered by Milgram are frightening. 65% of the participant, those who were the teacher, administered the experiment's maximum 450 volt shock to another human being they have never met before. No one, no one refused to comply before the 300 level, uh, 300 volt level. And during the debriefing after the experiment, when they were told what was really all about, the white majority of the participants justified their actions by saying they were simply following the rules and the orders they received. Each time I'm reading this morning text from the First Testament, the Milgram experiment comes back to my mind. This sinister story from the book of Genesis can have this power to chill every parent's souls, like I said, especially on Father's Day. Few passages of the Bible have provoked more anguish, controversy, and, and repulsive action than this perplexing text. As I mentioned uh, last week, Abraham and Sarah were invited in a divine call to leave behind uh, everything they had, everything they knew, and to set out to a strange and distant land with the promise that their offspring would become a great nation. The promise was a little odd because they were a childless aging couple, but God assured them on several occasions they would be descendants for their family. And for a long time, they both wait for the happy event. And when the couple was almost ready to give up, Isaac was born to Sarah. 
And from that moment on, I'm sure Abraham and Sarah's life uh, was probably filled with joy and happiness. Until a voice from heaven, the text says, some translation says, calling Abraham by name said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that, that I shall show you. In short, Abraham was ordered to take the gift he and Sarah received from God, the one they have hoped for so long, and to surround him, surround, surrender him in a cruel way to this strange and unpleasant request, to say the least. Abraham could have said, What is going on here, Lord? Why are you so cruel with us after all that we have done for you? There must be an error. Please, please reconsider what you are asking me to do. But nope, 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 nope. As soon as the voice finished speaking, Abraham complies with the order without hesitation or asking any question. Abraham gets with the program without resistance, protests, or complaint. The following morning, he prepares the normal procedure for the sacrifice, and after a three-day walk, when he could have changed his mind, nope, he finally arrives at destination, builds an altar, bound his son, and reach out to take his knife to slay him. Abraham raises arm ready to plunge it in the flesh of Isaac, in complete obedience and blind faith to his God. But at the last moment, the story tells us that an angel of the Lord stay, stop his end and prevent the fatal act. Abraham then see a ram caught in the nearby thicket and offer it up as a sacrifice in place of his son. I guess we could criticize with reason Abraham's action. And still, when we look closely and honestly at ourselves, we ought to wonder. Of course, God does not usually speak directly to us in such matter in asking us to kill our children. Still, many claim their position or their judgment or action come directly from God. They say, God told me to act in such a way because I read it in the Bible. Women are just unfit for church leadership position traditionally held by men. Homosexual are a bunch of sinners that deserve to be punished if they do not amend their ways. Everybody who's not a Christian and a Christian like me need to be converted or they will be damned for eternity. By holding this sort of discourse, too many people who consider themselves good Christians find a way to justify acts that defy common sense, even if it contradicts basic logic, accepted ethical standards, or the compassion at the core of the message Jesus the Christ came to share with the entire humanity. There will always be someone who will stand up and do something horrible and then invoking the argument that I'm just following what God told me to do. This kind of attitude led the Christian church to its worst episode in history. Because of it, some men and women believe that God wanted them to kill Muslims during the crusade in the Middle Age. Some believe that burning women during witch hunts was acceptable to God's eye. Some believe that the slaughter of millions of Jews during the Holocaust was part of God's great, na uh, great plan for humanity. Some believe that the assimilation of the First Nation in America was required to build the Kingdom of God. How many napalm bombs 
were launched. Holy war began, interrogation by waterboarding or lynching, lynching committed simply because some believe that God told them to do it and never ask why or wonder if it was ethical. On that day, Abraham was tested. As we are tested every day, but maybe not in the way we traditionally assume. Maybe the story is about how much we are full of ourselves sometimes, believing we know exactly what God says and wants. Maybe the test is not about obedience and, and blind faith, but about our humility and, most importantly, our humanity. Maybe this test is all about decency and common sense. Abraham heard a voice telling him something, so, telling him to do something horrible. How can he be certain it was God talking to him, commanding him to do something that completely contradict everything that he knew about God? And today, are we so arrogant to believe that we always understand the will of God clearly? What if, what if we made mistakes in our understanding of the divine, in our theologies, in our policy and regulation throughout the ages? Would we be humble enough to say that despite everything we have been told since our Sunday school, we are wrong? Would we be human enough to read the Bible differently, to read it through the lenses of justice, compassion, and dignity for all? Would we be open to welcome new truths and understanding of God's plan for all of us? Or will we just say, Sorry, God told me so. The story of Abraham's attempt to sacrifice his own son Isaac is one of those passages in the scripture that will remain opaque forever, probably. You wonder why the author of the Bible kept that story in the sacred text. I guess one of the central point of his story could be that Abraham was willing to act horribly solely out of his fear of God, even when he could not see clearly the logic of this divine command. Sometimes simply following orders and rules is wrong because they have nothing to do with God's dream for humankind. When we are confronted with unjust rules, unethical requests, inhuman conditions, it's our duty as Christians to stand up, to say, this is not what God wants for humanity for every one of us. It's our call to claim boldly sometimes, this is enough. I will not comply. Thank you for being there. Thank you for watching. Thanks be to God and Amen.